Welcome friends. Today we're diving into some overrated homemaking tips you often hear, and I'll share what you should do instead, and this time based on biblical principles. The first overrated homemaking tip would be perfectionism in cleaning, and this is why. Now, I feel like social media is probably the worst for this topic, but somehow we have been given this idea that our homes have to be perfect in order to be clean. And so if our homes don't look like they belong in a magazine, you know, showcase, then therefore we're not doing the right job. It's not clean enough. We feel like everything needs to be perfect all the time. Now, I know for me, as now our family has grown quite a bit and we have nine kids in the house, it doesn't look perfect all the time. There is no perfectionism here. Now, we definitely have a system and a routine, which we did a video on. If you guys would like to see, be sure to check out the links down in the description or leave me a comment. But while we have a system, we have a routine for how we can keep the home orderly, it certainly is not perfect. If someone is coming to my home looking for a perfectly clean house, I'm going to disappoint them every single time because that is not my goal. But I spent way too many years as a homemaker thinking I needed to keep it perfect. Thinking that this unnecessary pressure and stress was what everybody else was doing. And I think that can be really, really damaging because the more that we think that that's the expectation, that's the bar we have to meet, every time we don't hit that level of perfection, we start to think that we're doing something wrong. We're a bad homemaker, we're a bad mom, we're a bad wife, right? whatever it might be, we think that we've done something wrong. But that is not at all what the goal should be. Instead, as Christian homemakers, as wives, as moms, it is so much more important that we focus on maintaining a clean but peaceful home. We want a home where love and hospitality matter so much much more than perfection. And so sometimes even just giving ourselves that permission and that grace to say, okay, it may not be perfect, but it doesn't mean that it's not clean and tidy and cozy and hospitable for all those that the Lord puts on our path from our own spouse and children to neighbors and friends and family to have a space in a home that really does reach out and fill others, not because it's perfect and looks like a showroom, you know, you can walk around with your white gloves, but because of the true heart of our homes and what we're actually doing with the space the Lord has given us. Now, the second overrated homemaking tip is that we have to follow trends in our home decor. Now, I will be 150% honest and transparent with you guys and say that this was one of my biggest struggle areas for a long period of my life. I was an event planner. I was paid professionally to design beautiful spaces and events and to keep up with the trends. And I absolutely translated that in my own home. Every time we moved, and we moved nearly every year, if not more in one single year, I made sure that in every house we moved in, it had a complete theme. It was done from top to bottom. I changed it from house to house, I wanted to keep up with all of the things and make sure that I was a good homemaker because my house looked that way. It didn't matter that my marriage was struggling, I was having a hard time as a parent, we were just having many different deep root heart issues. It looked good and I kept up with all the things. I spent so much money on different things. Every time Hobby Lobby and Target or wherever came out with their new line of decor, I bought all the new things. For the holidays each year, right, that was a especially a time where I would buy in so much new stuff, trying to keep up with the latest whatever it was, right? I know that can be so hard. Again, I think especially with social media and even YouTube, things like this, we're able to see so many other people's highlight reels of life that it can be really difficult to weigh through that and not feel like we've got to do the next best thing. But maybe instead of following these trends in home decor that just change so quickly, leave us feeling so dissatisfied, we can never spend as much as someone else and have the right things or have all the things and then we feel like, ah, oh, I just, I lose that contentment in my own home because I don't have these things here. We want to create a home environment that truly does reflect our family's faith and values. I know for me, I went through a really big 
heart observation area in this where I realized just how caught up I was in home decor trends and doing the next best thing and keeping up with whatever facade I thought I needed to. And so I went for a long period where when we had actually moved into this home, I said, honey, I don't want to do anything. We moved into an old fixer upper rental. We knew it needed a lot of work. That was totally our plan and why we got this house because we were going to do all that work. And I said, you know what? What if we just don't for a while? What if we just leave it as is and really work on that area of contentment before moving on and doing something else? And in that time, I saw such amazing healing in myself, in my own walk with the Lord, in my own self as a person, when I realized that my value as a homemaker, as a wife, as a mom, as a friend, as a whatever, didn't come from all of the superficial stuff that I had put so much attention to in years past, but it really was something much deeper. And so really working through that time and building up a home that yes, I feel is comfy, is cozy, it really fits our family and what's important to us, but you see that reflected. It's no longer keeping up with the latest and greatest and the new line of this or whatever it might be that's coming out. It really is looking at what matters most to our family and responding in that. And so following trends and home decor, no thanks, I'm good. <laughs> I've matured past that and that is no longer an area that I want to be trapped in and I don't think you should either. The third overrated homemaking tip is you don't need to buy expensive organizing systems. Now hear me out because this is an area that I do touch on often but I think there's more to it than we might realize sometimes. Selling people solutions is a great way to make money. When we take and overcomplicate and make systems for things, while well, never addressing the root cause is always the better financial decision for a business. It's why the pharmaceutical industry doesn't sell cures. They sell medicine to kind of deal with the symptoms, but it never really cures the problem. It's the same type of an idea. The more we talk about organizational systems, right, whether it is buying all the storage containers, the pretty acrylic ones, right, the, the closet systems, the pantry systems, maybe it's the things like apps and programs or planner books. And, and I say this as someone who uses those things, yes, but there's a difference here. You don't need the next greatest, best, prettiest, whatever organizational system. You need simple, functional solutions that actually work for your family in your season of life. You can't organize clutter, okay? And so often what we have is we just have too much in our life. Too much stuff, too many activities, too many commitments, right? Too many things. How many times do we see these amazing solutions, especially for things like children's toys? And if you buy all the boxes and you make all the labels and you do all the things that look so beautiful, right? but then your kids can't keep up with it and you get upset at them for not keeping up with this intricate organizational system. The problem wasn't that you just needed to buy a fancier, better, more expensive, more detailed organizational system. The problem was that you needed to find a true solution. And oftentimes it's that our young children are overwhelmed with the amount of toys and stuff that they have to keep up with. And so trying to keep up now with an intricate organizational system that you're really worked up over isn't the best solution for your family. And so it's more important to find a true solution. If we're not looking at the root cause, then we're really missing out and we're only healing with a Band-Aid up here versus understanding where the real problem is. And so buying expensive organizational systems, be it physical, be it you know whatever type of app or program or something that you might use, quite often isn't really addressing the actual root cause of the issue and therefore doesn't leave you with those lasting results. And then you think it's just you that I'm using it wrong or the family's in the wrong because they're not keeping up with the system. Now systems and, and things are great, they're fantastic. I love having apps that I can rely on. I love having my planner I can put my stuff in. I love having and systems and things to use, but instead of thinking that you need to buy the next latest and greatest whatever it is that's being pandered out there, 
you really need to look at that and go in this current season of life, is this actually going to address the root problem I'm facing and really bring me a true solution to my problem? And if it's not going to do that, then it's probably not the best thing for you. And so it's okay to pass on the expensive setups that are out there and being promoted if they're not really going to address the root cause, the root issue that you're facing. Now my fourth overrated homemaking tip is definitely multitasking everything. Now this is absolutely the pot calling the kettle black. Multitasking leads to burnout. And as busy moms, I know we're usually wearing a lot of different hats, okay? Most women today, honestly, most every person alive today is multitasking. We live in a world that seems to demand we multitask. And I know that as a, I'm a homeschool mom, we have ministry, we homestead. I mean, just normal life things, keeping the home in general, I wear a lot of different hats. And I find that the more I'm flipping between all these hats throughout the day, this multitasking really does burn me out. I get exhausted, I get overwhelmed, and then my attitude changes and I'm not showing that godly conduct that I'm called to because I'm burnt out. And instead, it's so important that we start to make the shift of intentionality. That's why I love the word simple. The more we simplify, the more we bring in the simplicity in our life, the more beautiful life truly becomes. Because when we focus on doing fewer things with intention, you're going to see a massive, very drastic change in your life. And so maybe we need to stop and go, okay, why am I multitasking and doing so many things? Sometimes it might be nice, right? Like sometimes there might be a purpose and a place for it. If I really hate folding laundry and I like never can seem to get to it, but then I couple that with listening to this YouTube video or something like that, right? Then it's something enjoyable that, hey, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna listen to something enjoyable, I'm gonna couple that with something that I don't like and that helps me get through that task and then I start actually looking forward to that task because I know that's the time that I listen to the thing I wanna listen to or whatever it might be, right? Sometimes there can be a purpose but oftentimes we're multitasking in a way that is running us down versus building us up. And so being able to start being aware of that and asking those questions and going, hmm, should I be multitasking like this, right? Is my time with my kids doing schoolwork the best time to also have my laptop out and going through emails? Well, probably not because my children could really use my time and attention right there and I'm dividing it on something that I really should leave for a different time. Knowing when to do this and when to utilize it as a helpful resource versus just being overran by multitasking is a very valuable lesson that I promise we all need to learn and then remember to keep utilizing all the days that the Lord has us here. Now, my fifth and final overrated homemaking tip here that I would love to share with you is comparing your home to others. Now there's no way around it. Comparison leads to discontent. It is just a thief of joy and not where we want to be. And I wanna say this because I know this was an area that I used to struggle in. And so again, I went through this long period where I did nothing to our home. I stripped everything out. I really addressed the root cause. I find it kind of funny now because sometimes I will get these messages and it makes my heart so sad. And I just wanna give these people the biggest hugs, but people will come on because they're stuck in this discontentment area. They will compare their home to my home and make these wild assumptions about just how expensive and lavish everything is. And it kind of makes me chuckle because really everything in my home comes from a thrift store. <laughs> and It's very intentional on why we have it. And I'm the last person in the world making you think, ooh, you're doing it wrong if it doesn't look like me. I currently don't have pantry doors on my pantry, okay? So you're probably doing a little bit better than I am if not being in the same boat. I promise you it's not all sunshine and rainbows and that's that's okay. When we are constantly comparing our homes to others, we're constantly sowing seeds of discontentment. Instead of getting stuck in that trap, let's be content with what God has given us, be it in little or in plenty. 
this is where God has us today. And it doesn't mean that everything's perfect and it's all sunshine and rainbows, but when we're constantly just looking at someone else and going, the grass is greener over there, well, the grass is greenest where you water it. And so instead, let's focus on where the Lord has us, be thankful for each and every day and the blessings that abound in it, and not get stuck in this trap of always comparing ourselves to someone else. We're all in different walks. We don't have the full story of everybody else's life. Let's not keep running ourselves down and thinking that we need to be in comparison and in some like secret homemaker like league of who's doing it better. That's not what we wanna do. We're lifting one another up. We're making the most out of the individual situation that we're all currently in and giving God all the thanks and praise for it, regardless of how perfect or imperfect it might be. I hope this could be a source of encouragement for you here today, but you'll have to let me know which homemaking tip resonated with you the most. Leave me a comment down below, and if you have any questions, be sure to leave a coffee cup emoji next to it so that way Sabrina and I can answer your questions in our next chatty coffee date. See you on the next one. Bye, friends!